All right, let's get let's go back to the start. Yeah, let's 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 wind the clock back. Right, yeah, let's yeah, go. yeah, very I have good. to say wind the clock. Back. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna not gonna use it, but you get upset when I don't say. It. You no, feel no, it's, it's fine. It's, you know what? And people have that t- anyway. Uh, how did you end up doing what you're doing? Um, so I'm not even sure what you are doing. It's... Yeah, I probably tell you what I do. <laughs> yeah, so what? I am um, I'm an author. Oh, that's my good. main source of income, and my what I spend most of my time doing uh, is writing books. So I've written two books already. I've got a new book coming out next year, which I've kind of just finished writing. It's being edited and copy edited and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I do that. I write books about capitalism, basically. I also do a lot of kind of media appearances. So, you know, I'll go on Question Time and Politics Live and all that sort of top stuff. Top podcasts. Yeah, and top podcasts, of course. Talk about the day's affairs and, and that sort of more like directly political stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'm kind of, you know, mixed between writing and, and What's media. The, your last book was How the Pandemic Will Change Capitalism. Yeah, that was just a short one I wrote during the, the pandemic. What um, are you working on right now? So this one um, is called, we actually came up with the title really late because there were big disagreements on what the title should be. Anyway. We, called, you're, you're a team. Me and my publisher because ah, okay. like, they've bought the book. So they basically get to tell me what it's going to be yeah, called. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I want it to be this. And they were like, no, that's boring. No one's going to pick it up. We want it sexy and whatever. So it's going to be called Vulture Capitalism, Whoa. which is, you know. And it's going to have a naked woman on the cover. Yeah. It might it's, do, it's, yeah. It's, it's attacking already. That would be incredibly anti-feminist. So it should be a naked you know, man on the saying, cover. Somebody's Vulture. going to pick it up. Yeah, yeah, true. You know. Anyway, we've really lost the plot. But we have some top tips of uh, printing ideas there for your we, book. Great, we thank you. We're going down the route of so how you ended, did you end up? Yeah. Oh, how did I end up doing what I was doing? So I started, I did my degree at Oxford, did... Politics, philosophy, and economics, along with all of the kind of worst people in our political system. Yes. Exactly. Um, and then I started working for a think tank. I was in, an intern at a think tank for a bit. Um, and that was actually doing stuff around um, like local uh, economics and local politics. Then I went to work for KPMG, actually, for like less than a year uh, doing Kapoor consulting Man. yeah, for their government um, and healthcare practice, which I was not particularly good at. I'm not, again, you know, ADHD, not very good in big organizations. I'm more... Big let's picture, say, it's too detailed. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, I'm say on the same that. Page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so didn't do that for very long. I then went to work for IPR, which was a think tank. I really enjoyed working there, actually. I stayed there for three years, I think, doing lots of reports. And that's where I started doing media. That's where I started doing interviews and like doing more journalistic writing. Eventually got the offer to write a book, took some time off, wrote the book. The book did well. Started doing lots more media. Right, right. Um, and th- you know things. Just Are you dyslexic off. as an ADHD? Commonly? I'm actually not. No. Ah, okay. Although the the attention to detail thing is like when I write, I like do skip out words and whatever. Luckily, I have copy editors now who help me with that. But um, yeah, so you know things just basically took off, uh, and it was during the kind of you know 2017 to 2019 period where socialism was suddenly fun again. So lots of people wanted my suddenly opinion. Suddenly fun again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you got a long term goal? Um, a long term goal. I mean, look. My long-term goal, I, I like to think about what I do really as trying to change the way that people think about capitalism um, and try to change the way that people think about the economy. So for me, the goal is get the ideas that I'm trying to push out in as many hands as possible. And at the moment, that looks like writing books, but it also looks like longer term, you know, potentially taking that onto different forms of media, mm. like trying to get um, young people particularly engaged with some of these ideas. Um, and yeah, you know, just to kind of expanding my reach, really. What's the most misunderstood thing about what you do? I think people underestimate how hard it is to write a book and overestimate how hard it is to go on TV. We all think we could write a book if we just had enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's very challenging to write a good book. What's I've the had... hardest thing about writing a book? Keeping everything together in your head. Wow. So it's, you know, you know, you can write you an article. You need a whiteboard, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You can write an article and everyone thinks, oh, if I can write an article, I can write 10 articles so I can write a book. But actually having like the argument and the structure and being able to keep those ideas together in your head, coming back to them all the time in every every section, every paragraph to making sure you're really driving home that key point, it's hard. I always found mm. like writing a dissertation, I kind of thought I've got this great argument and it's And it kind of falls really to pieces. Good. And then it sort of falls yeah. to, exactly, it falls to pieces and there's nothing really there when well, you get right on, into on it. And when you like, push yourself, it's so true. Yeah, yeah. you can. <laughs> Actually, I, there's only a few times I've heard authors who, I think it's Agatha Christie was one of the people who could do it, that she would, didn't know what the end of the story was and she'd sit down and she'd write. And three days later, she'd or a week later, That's she'd finish the book. Sh- 
<laughs> are they are they shit? I've never yes. read one. But I mean, you know, I mean, characterization is not really non-existent in them. Yeah, right. yeah, and also they're I mean, just the stories, good, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, it's different. And I sit them. down to tell my kid a story at night, and sometimes I get really into it. And then, as you say, I forget where I am in yeah. it and all the details. Now I just have to finish it. And like, and then the farmer just said, "Oh, I can't be doing this anymore." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're asleep by then anyway. So, what what are you most excited about? What am I most excited about for your career? God. Um, I suppose I'm pre pretty excited about my next book coming out. Yeah, I mean, mm. that, like the process of writing a book is a nightmare. Having it come out is really fun because for about a year, you're doing events everywhere. You know, I've got book deals in dozens you're of countries. You're the taste of the town. Yeah, so you're going all yeah. around the world. You're meeting loads of people, talking uh. about ideas, doing interviews. You're just talking about this thing that you've created. After a while, it gets a bit boring, but initially it's really fun. That's better than music. I find by the time you release, and DM would agree with this, in your musicians, but by the time you release an album, then... Yeah, you hate all the songs. Yeah. You're just so <laughs> bored of it. And then people are yeah. like, oh, I really like that album. You're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I guess if you were a big artist, you might then tour and talk about your album. But in a way, you don't talk about your album that much. You just go play yeah. music sort of thing. I quite like the idea. No, 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 I don't. So by the end of a book, you're not sick of it. You're glad it's over. Well, and you're quite happy to chat about you it. You may be. I think I, I would say it's about a year after the book's actually come out, you're sick of it by then. Maybe six months, depending on how much you like it. Um, I'm not sick about of, of this book yet, and I've nearly finished it. Maybe I will Excellent. be by the time it comes out, but no, I'm, I'm still really excited about it, actually. What's your biggest fuck up? So probably, actually, and this comes down to the big picture versus detail thing. In my first book, I had a couple of little, um, you know, like factual errors and like stuff that was wrong and that wasn't double checked. And because I was, you know, this, I didn't have a lot of resources behind the book, but I was growing on social media. So a lot of people were looking oh, really hard at what I was doing. This is how to save they, the like, world from finalization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like took me apart online for, you know, like some... On page 63. They literally, oh, literally I have noticed that, that yeah, you've yeah, yeah. missed, you know. Yeah, so that was quite annoying. Luckily, you know, they all came out very quickly and we managed to do a reprint within a few months that had all the errors corrected. So it wasn't too much of a big deal. But it was like, you know, awkward and embarrassing. Mm. It's and horrible to be wrong, isn't it? Yeah, but I you know what? It's a good lesson because you're always going to be wrong about something. It's always you know? hard though when it's your own, like your own creation. Yeah. I thought you, I guess it was the start of your career, so you don't get to just hand it to someone to do the no, really, really boring yeah. line. Gonna, I was I'm like 24, 20... three when says, I started writing that. The you've checked yeah. all of this, yeah? And yeah, you yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't more wrong with it, to be honest. <laughs> What's I, your passion outside of work? Again, uh, the same as my vice, surfing. Okay. Yeah. Surfing, yeah. weed. She's secretly it's saying, cool thing "Yeah, it's very cool." I'm really bad at it. Like, let's just let's just you know get that. I think clear. everyone is it. Yeah, aren't they? Isn't it's that, like, really the hard, <laughs> but I love it. It's great. Whenever anybody says surfing to me, I immediately think of um, that... sharks. That's no, what I think, I think of. of that film with. Point break. Point, point break. break. I yeah. love that film. It's, it's so Dead fun. President. Quite inspiring, yeah. I feel I for you. About. But my problem is because I watch George, I can't do the paddling with my legs dangling with my head above the water. <laughs> I don't care what country I'm in, even England. You're just my legs are going to disappear. Something's There's going to be a little you. tug from yeah. the I'll see. I have to get out of the water so I could never surf. And also, you're a huge attraction. You know, if, you, if you're in the right part of the world, great yeah. whites love those seal looking California, things. Australia, South Africa, you're, you're in a bit of danger. Oh my God. I haven't surfed in any of those places, but. There's yeah. a guy who studies sharks. He gets a surfboard and he puts a hole in it and he puts a camera in the thing looking downwards and he reels it out on a massive uh, fishing line. And this is in South Africa. Yeah. And he's all guys studies. So you get this footage of great whites hitting this thing. Wow. And so it's dark. It's like a really good camera, but it's dark. And then you just see this. Yeah, no, oh no, my no, God. No, no. You no. see this thing and it comes so fast. Yeah. And the mouth. And you're like, think it's a seal. oh my God, I am yeah. never swimming in that water, you know, ever. Oh, anyway. Scary, yeah. Oh, bad. Primeval. Uh, what, it's my go. Uh, what's the worst advice you've ever been given? What's the worst advice I've ever been Oh, God, yeah. So when I was at school, everyone used to say, oh, you're really good at arguing, so you should become a lawyer. I would have been a terrible lawyer because, again, the attention to detail thing. And actually, a lot of lawyers don't, you know... I don't, don't actually know. argue, yeah. I don't do a lot of arguing. Yeah, exactly. You're Especially now when yeah. you're doing solicitoring and barristering and it's yeah. you know and you know what i do because i'm a corporate lawyer so even when i'm like if i'm selling or buying a company for somebody everybody wants to get to the same place they all want slightly different things because they want to buy it for as cheaply as possible and these people want to sell so it you're, for as yeah, much you're mediating as possible. you're not but like... you're all actually trying to do the same thing yeah so it's not really 
there's nothing really to argue about. Yeah, I mean, so that was not a very good piece of advice yeah. for me. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? The best piece of advice I've ever been given. I think the one that I come back to most when I'm trying to make a decision is just, my mum always used to say to me, just trust your gut. And I think that's like just the most important thing, you know, yeah. in any decision-making process. Because you can write lists and analyze any problem for God knows how long. But if you're actually in touch with what you want and you really kind of, you know, can ground yourself in that, like, intuition. I think, I think that's the, I the think most important thing. it can thing. be difficult because, like, I personally, my gut is very much attached to my sense of fear. Yeah, I know what you mean. You have to be able to, like, disaggregate those yeah. the emotions that's almost an anxiety from the intuition. You're saying, no, it? but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes somebody will ask me to do something and my gut will say, oh, no, don't do that. You'll look like an idiot. Or it'll all yeah. go wrong. Or it'll go. And that is not really my gut. What advice would you give your younger self? What advice would I give my younger self? I think get a hobby. <laughs> I would have liked it if I'd started doing the surfing earlier because, to be honest, for you most did music, of my... that was your hobby. But I wasn't... I worked so hard. I was just obsessed from about the age of 22 to, um, I think, like, 28. I was just like, I need to... I didn't listen to my parents' advice when they were like, just be happy. I was like, no, I need to succeed. I need to prove myself. I need to prove everyone wrong. I'm going to listen to all the things that everyone's saying about me and I'm going to take them to heart and I'm going to, you know, I'll do show everything. show these people what exactly, an expelled person can exactly. do. Exactly. And it's good because I achieved a lot, but I've gotten to this point in my life now and I'm like, I just, I didn't focus on my relationships. I didn't focus on myself. I didn't have anything else going on. It was just work, 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 right, right, right. Go on the media, put myself in such stressful situations all the time. I feel like I was constantly on edge for a lot of that time. Um, and it wasn't good for me. And it just made me like, you know, a shell of a person, really. When I think I can, about when it was the worst. It feels can, like you're having a midlife crisis. Yeah, I can, I'm 100% early, having a midlife crisis. But you're very young, Mary. And I can imagine, <laughs> this is the chat. I can almost imagine it out on the waves on the surface. <laughs> can't you? And the lad saying, you know, I just, I just, I just work too much. And they were like, yeah, man. Yeah, you man. You're right. I've Pe had a midlife people, crisis. People work too much. It's like Cal <laughs> Cal the only California in Britain, I always think, is Cornwall. Because when you yeah. do get down to Cornwall, it has that vibe. Yeah. Like, yeah man, chill out, man. You know? Just like enjoy so, for a um, bit. Recommendations on what to read, what to watch, what to listen to. I mean, to. obviously, my own books. Absolutely. <laughs> you can get them on, in all good bookstores, there's an audio book, which I read myself. Oh, nice. Hilariously. Um, the next one's coming out next year, obviously. Are you doing it in a hilarious manner, or are you just no? Mean... Just like it's funny to that listen to myself so read it. Be funny. Do. It was bizarre. It's actually so difficult to just sit there and read something. It is. You've got ADHD. Yeah, you just trip over your words all the time, and you go too fast. You go. Too... Oh, it's just a nightmare. But anyway, it's there. It's available. Um, but no. Okay, so other stuff. Uh, my a, a friend of mine. We're talking about. We've talked about climate change. Um, Michaela Loach has just released this great book called It's Not That Radical about climate breakdown. And she's this amazing activist who has done loads of work on, you know, campaigning and all this sort of stuff in the UK. And she's she's got this book out, which I think everyone should read. And it's really, you know, simple and easy to connect with. Podcast? Podcast. Oh, yeah. Everyone should check out. If you want a kind of easy to listen to summary of, you know, socialist stuff going on in the UK, Navara Media is great. Um, they do a lot of kind of podcasts and audio and visual content and stuff. Um, and they get loads of interesting guests on and whatever. So that's kind of like socialism 101. Obviously, also, I write for Tribune magazine. Um, so Tribune in the UK, definitely check us out. Uh, this is like Tribune was like an old magazine that was mm -hmm. for the, the socialists back in, you know, the 1930s and kind of, you know, stopped really being released for a while. And it was then bought up again recently. And we kind of relaunched it and grew it. And it's now you know, got this kind of community around it and it's about news from the labour movement, news from the left, opinion, like all this sort of stuff. Um, so definitely worth checking that out. And if you want to, subscribing. Um, yeah. I find the bipartisan thing just, it, I think it's almost, we talk about the structural problems of democracy or economics, but I don't think we talk about, you know, this basic problem that of having red or blue or left or right or anything. You know, I the reason I'm... Le uh, Labour is red. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I want to be in the middle because, you know, I think we all need to be in the middle. Like, if you start any conversation with the point of view is, I hate rich... I'm just going to be crass, but I hate rich people or I hate poor people or I think this or I think that. 
you know, we'll never solve this world because we need to be humans. We need to basically, we, you know, climate change, I hope, brings us eventually all together because I think eventually it will. People will die and die and die until we all sit down at the fucking table and say, right, let's sort this shit out, you know? I know red or red, left or right shit, you know? But I don't think either side would describe themselves in that way. Right. No, but I just think I just think don't take a side. The best Find way the you middle. get to the middle is by having people articulate opinions on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's hitting each other for a well, six no, on either otherwise, side. Otherwise, otherwise you get this kind of faux centrism, right? Which is what you know people like Keir Starmer That's say they're going to do. It's like, oh, I'm just going to mm. go and des design this policy based on what a couple of people in a focus no, group told me. No, but can't we just ten question, one middle. question at a time and stop worrying about whether it's left or right and try and come up with the well, right answer? So and you would end up with something that isn't necessarily. By the, the way, do you know where the whole idea of left and right comes from? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's a re go on, tell us. Uh, well, I think it's from the. Um, well, not really Parliament, but the Assembly in oh, hang on, during the French said Revolution. Yes. I do, yeah, this is right. It's the French Revolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The French Revolution. Yeah. And the, the various different factions in the French Revolution. Re Re Revolution? Yes. Yeah. Stood on different sides of the, the chamber. chamber. Yeah. Oh, and this is the left so and right. All the French. It's all the fault of the French again. Yeah.